Hey, namaste, beloved ones, and welcome to Soul Mirrors Be Amazed. I am Kira, and it is my absolute joy to be here with you this evening. And thank you for tuning in on this extraordinary night. You know, this is a moment before us that is truly a blessing and one that is post full moon, yet in this creation energy that's moving us toward this very potent is the word I'm going to use new moon coming up on the 26th. And this evening is an opportunity of remembrance. And I first want to give a big, beautiful bow and a hello to everyone that's tuning in to us over at tfrlive.com. Namaste. Welcome to Soul Mirrors. Be amazed. We love you. And of course, over at onenesstalkradio.com, where you can listen to us audio. You can watch us if you scroll down on the homepage there. And of course, chat uh, if your heart chooses to do so. In addition, we are also broadcasting live this evening over at YouTube at onenesstalkradio.com. And I believe also at Official Street. And Kira, I think, and also at uh, Oneness Talk Radio Facebook. So join in, get in the chat. I know that in a couple of these chats, I believe Bria Rose is there from right here at Tosa Blue Mountain Sanctuary. And I also want to give a shout out to my beautiful bird, Chelita, right here. You guys can see Chelita. Um, Chelita just got back from his second surgery today and is doing really, really well. And uh, many people have asked me about Chelita because I always broadcast this show from my office. And so I wanted to share this beautiful being of mastery love because it was on the day of the full moon, the night that we were blessed to have an extraordinary mastery ceremony here at Tosa Blue Mountain, that my beloved Chelita had to go in for emergency surgery to actually remove the pin that got put in when he was first attacked. And so I have him here tonight as a symbol of um, resurrection and tenacity and the power of love and presence. Because in our little town here, no, it's unheard of for anyone to have gone to the lengths that we have gone to to keep this bird on the planet and the connection that this bird has with everyone it meets. And so I just wanted to take that moment and thank you for allowing me to share it with you because in many ways, we are all spreading our wings right now. And many of us have pins inside of us that we're not sure what was the trauma that caused it or why it was put in. But in this moment of November right now, and I find this show tonight very serendipitous because it's bringing together some extraordinary people. We are all being gifted with the opportunity to say, here I am, this is who I am. And if you didn't see this before, then I apologize for hiding. And I won't make that mistake again. And to recognize that in those words, there is a declaration to the universe that claims the truth, the presence, and the power that the gift of the divine you carry is now awake. And so this full moon, and I was talking about this all month long, my beloved husband and I, Shri, have been talking about it. And uh, if you've not been to our website or to YouTube, go watch all, everything we've been talking about, because this full moon was unlike any other in harmony with this Mercury retrograde, bringing all of the pieces of harmonies together. And I know that this week, and I'm curious how your week's been. This week, the pieces of the harmonies that have come together, some of them have been a welcome, yes. Some of them an extraordinary delight and surprise and some of them intimidating, yet all of them extraordinary. And as you're reflecting through this moment, I suspect you're having that same experience. So before we go any further tonight, I want to bring in uh, as someone who's been very much a regular on this show and someone that you all know very well, and that is our beloved Jess Juntunen. And uh, I've just invited her in to join us on the show. Hey, there's Jess. And um, namaste, Jess. Hi. Hi, namaste. Hello, everybody. I love that you're coming to us from the cosmos tonight. I'm just loving That's that. Right. That's right. I beamed in directly from the. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for doing so. So, Jess, I have to just surprise delight you, right? It's soul mirrors. Be amazed. So 
today I, I have to ask about this particular day. So, you know, we had the full moon, right? Everything that happened then. And I had this whole vision of you that day and this rock and crazy mist that Jess made that like has my heart forever. You have no idea, Jess, I'm almost out. My oh. husband, Shri is like, what are you doing? And Bria Rose, I'm like, Jess missed. It's so <laughs> amazing. We all love it so much. So I had this whole vision of you and doing things together. Well, over the past two days, I've been talking to some of the most amazing women on the planet about bringing back Women Wellness Awakenings, which was the very first series I ever did when I was bridging the business world and becoming Kira Ra. And that was the series that got me on Good Morning America way back when and all those other things. And today, when this ensoulment that came through that I still don't know what to do with, we're going to talk about that, um, came through today. Um, I had a vision of you involved with this other group of women I've been talking with about this reboot and about how we see this as mastery mentorship for, for all awake women or the woman within. Hmm. And that this process is for every generation to experience collectively and yet within our own heart space. And so I wrote these two beautiful women who I've been co-creating this project with today and said, I need to tell you about Jess Juntunen. And so I just wanted to share with you that that was one of the gifts that you gave me today was the opportunity to see you as part of this collective and, and to feel your presence so viscerally. Because I don't know about you, Jess, and I'm going to throw this to you right now. I don't know what dimension I'm in anymore. And I don't know that I care. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, Jess, take it away. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm kind of blown away and speechless. Thank you. And that, but it honestly fits so much with my vision and the work I'm doing in the world. And honestly, I'm kind of wondering what time that was because I was doing some big work this mid morning. I'll, I'll send you the email. I'll send you the email where I had you in it. Yeah. And it'll have the timestamp. Oh my goodness. So just astounding. Today's amazing. I honestly feel like I'm anchoring the full moon energy today. I don't know right. about others, but it, it's today that I'm feeling yeah. that big anchoring. Well, you know, okay. So let's talk about that because on the full moon, my personal experience and the experience of my beloved husband, Sri Ramka, and the amazing people that were here with us, it was all about the power of five and eternal life and eternal soul agreements and restoration of family. And, and that the claiming of the missions was done with such clean, clear presence and we all felt the ripple around the world. I mean, around the universe. And then when I was there in what felt like timeless space of that evening, and we did this in the Temescal first. Well, first we opened up in the fire pit. Then we moved to the Temescal. Then it was a really cloudy night. And I clearly heard we had to leave the Temescal right then and there. Jess, it was the only time that night the clouds cleared and we all saw the moon and wow. got the pictures. The wow. only time for like Shri, what was it? Five minutes, maybe? Right. Yeah, like five minutes. Wow. And so I'm sharing this with you because today is the 14th. It's the five. And it's also, right? You feel that? Yeah. It's, it's, it's also, we, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there is this like waxing. Remember the full moon by tomorrow we're going to be now really moving out. You have that. It's, it's almost like a Mercury retrograde pre and post. And so this is like the peak of that release as well. Wow. So is that tying in kind of with what you're experiencing as well? Because we're going to, when we get uh, my beloved Zadok Ra Osiris in here, we're going to talk to him about this too. Yeah, it's fascinating. Uh, that definitely resonates for me. And I have so much gratitude just coming in today and gratitude for you and all of you and our whole community and I'm just feeling an angry of our mastery like like yes I know all of us are saying yes even if you don't know what you're saying yes to but that you're just saying yes <laughs> like no, I'm saying yes to me. yeah and I can feel that it's it's really beautiful 
Well, you're really beautiful. And, and I want to share with everyone that one of the reasons I invited Jess to come on this evening is that Jess, isn't it surreal that the next time I talk to you, it's going to be in Bhutan. Right. right. Is that crazy? Like, I have to admit, it's just been hitting Shri and I were really going to Bhutan. <laughs> like, it's just, it's like pinch me, you know, it, it's, it's really one of those things. And, um, I, I wanted to, uh, as we had the opportunity, and this was my last time as a live host this evening, let all of you know that we are so blessed that Jess Juntanen has said yes to step in and make sure Soul Mirrors is right on track while we are gone. She is going to be co-hosting every week. The shows are incredible. Starting right up next week, your, your guest, Christina Job, and all about the 5G revolution, I'm tuning in from New Delhi, girl. I, I will be listening from India. I can tell you that. Are you excited? I'm so excited. I'm so excited about having Christina on. She rocks. Uh, as some of you know, she's doing the 5G clothing and she's definitely a soul sister. So I just know <sighs> it's going to be an amazing show to I bow with. before her I and, and I bow before you both and I'm very excited. And then, you know, check it out. If you're on our e-card list, you already saw all the shows Jess has lined up, including, uh, and I want to give a big bow and shout out to my beloved Kenla, who I believe is holding this evening as well. And I'll bring him in. Uh, Jess, I'll share with you that Ken Law sent me an email today and said that he was making sure that he was buying a SIM card as a backup backup. We are going to do everything in our power to be there with you from Bhutan and hopefully it will be live. And if not, at the very least, we will get, we will get a video to you. <laughs> we will get awesome. something to you. So, so I wanted all of you to know that the first live update from our journey into Shangri-La Bhutan will be right here on this show. December 5th with beloved Jess Juntanen as our co-host. And then Jess, I will return live as a co-host in early January. And I'm excited that we're going to have more to share then. It's, it's, it's just heating up, isn't it? It is. It's all just getting going. <laughs> it really is. And so Jess, speaking of getting it going, I want to uh, take a minute and introduce tonight's special guest and bring him in uh, before we let you uh, enjoy the show and maybe jump into the chat and a few of our streaming places, which would be wonderful. And before I do that, even though it's nearly full, I wanted to remind you all that you can call in 517-208-1500. Again, that's 517-208-1500. You do get to listen to the show while you are holding and uh, hey, we've got a very full call board, but you know, when it comes time to bring you into the show, we really go by the energy that's emanating. And, and Jess, I don't know if I ever shared the story with you, but I want to share a story with you that is really dear to my heart. And um, this evening's guest is one of those beings that the first time you meet them, you say thank you to the universe for the confirmation that you're not alone. And I will never forget, Shri and I were very early in our public service and we were um, on, the, on the circus circuit, as I call it, right? And so we were on the circus circuit and one of our new books was out and we were in Florida at this lovely expo. And uh, we were giving a, I, I don't even remember what the workshop was about, but here's what I remember about that workshop. And it's the only thing I remember. My husband and I were up in the front of the room and uh, I think that the workshop had begun a little bit and I was getting ready. I think we were gonna be doing an installment. And I'll never forget standing, you know, we were in one of those big ballrooms. And so we're up at the front on the stage and where we were standing on the stage, you could see the doors in the back of the room, you know, that would open. And the doors opened and I kid you not, I saw two beams of light. <laughs> it's all I saw at first. And they were like, not quite dolphins, but they were like, well, they were like cosmic lights of dolphins, like crystalline. And I was watching and as they got closer to the stage, they started, you know, taking form. And I, um, before they said anything, uh, Moira and I were already having this complete conversation. And it was hard for me to focus on my workshop at that point because she and I were already up here. And I, and when I saw Ra, who was then Ra, um, when I looked at him, I felt as if I was looking at Sri, as if I was looking at a brother, as if I was looking at 
a dearest friend, a spiritual family member that I have known eternally. And in that moment, I knew I would be always available to support and be available to assist in any way these beautiful beings. And then we got to know them. And it turned out that uh, Ra and Moira really were the pioneers of what true sacred union looks like. And they really were the first ones to go out there and say, this is who I am. And I declare this without hesitation, without prejudice, without apology. <laughs> this is who we all are. And, and over the many, many years that I've had the blessing of knowing him, he has always been a source for me of a sense of home and a sense of, I'll, I, I would even say the word safety at times when I would even question myself. And so Jess, I, um, I wanted you to meet our beloved, beloved who's coming on this evening in the energy of how I met him the first time. And so let's bring him in, should we? All right, so let's welcome our beloved guest this evening, my, my dear, dear friend who I bow before, uh, Zadok Ra Osiris, we're bringing him in right now. There he is. Namaste, Angel. Hi, honey. Let me unmute you. Mwah. Let me unmute you, sweetheart. There we are. Now we can hear your beautiful voice and see your precious self. Welcome to Soul Mirrors, my angel. What a blessing. What an honor and privilege. What opulence and joy to be with you in this special way. Dear Angel, your energies are so sublime and your stories are so beautiful. They show who you really are and how deep you are and how special you are to this planet, what you and Sri bring and have to offer. And our, our story about how we first met you was also so deep because Moira mm -hmm. and I were looking at ourselves and saying, wow, now here are some really special people. And what are they doing? I said uh, to Moira, and they were looking, you and Sri were looking up at the ceiling. <laughs> she said, they're looking at the angels. Mm. I said, oh, oh, yes, they are amazing. So that's the only people we ever saw who started their workshop by looking up at the ceiling <laughs> instead of the people in the class. And they were <laughs> calling attention to the students that there were angels with us, angels among us. And that started a long, beautiful relationship where this two lovely couple, Sri and Kira, started the, the path of initiating people to knowing that we are all angels and the angels are with us. Indeed. And I remember a story about you two beloveds that I said, it's very funny, my dear ones, but I, I have to let you know, I don't mean to toot my horn, but. Moira and I paved the way for you to come into New Mexico and take it by storm. Oh, because absolutely. <laughs> no, that is so true. That is so true. Yeah. But, but not really. You did it because you have the grace. We, it took us, it was like in the pioneer days, it was very hard to, to do anything or get anything done or have anybody look at you or see you for anything cosmic. And then we left. And then in comes Sri and Kiran, and everybody's ready for the angels and taking the teachings and being uplifted. And Moira and I are scratching our head. And I said, well, we said, that's what it takes to be a pioneer. You set the way. You don't, you don't bask in the glory and the gravy. That comes later for someone who is ready to be able to uplift the people because the people are ready. So it's a blessing to be at all stages of the teaching format. But what a special time to share together and what an honor to spend all these years together and remain friends. Because we are beyond that, because it is beyond that, you know, this is, this is the blessing of walking in our soul's presence. And Jess, I just wanted to offer you a moment to um, be in the energy of, of our beloved guest before we give you the, the gift of being able to relax this evening. And thank you for being here. And uh, Jess, I also just want to share that I know as my feet land in Varanasi in just a few days, India, and then journey onward to Bhutan, that 
Soul Mirrors is right here with you and that I am so grateful and excited for the audience as they will have the opportunity to expand this journey over the next few weeks. So thank you, Jess, for your gift and, and for all that you are doing for humanity. I'm very grateful. Oh my goodness. Thank you. And I look forward to time with everybody and we will be all lighting up and bridging and connecting while you are there. I know yes. it. Yes, <laughs> in every way it is so true. All right, my angel. Well, according to Zoom, I'm going to allow you to be an attendee. <laughs> and so enjoy my angel. <laughs> Bye. Oh, and here we are. All right. Well, Ra, I am uh, Za, you know, okay. I have, I tell me, what do I call you? What makes your heart sing in this moment? Well, how should I address you? Well, I think what sounds best and energetically and everything is Za. Yeah, it's I sort agree. of like, think of the, instead of the Wizard of Oz, think of the Wizard of Za. <laughs> I will, of course I will. And, 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 I love and if that. you really love Ra and you remember Ra and you want Ra, Mori Ra, and Kira also says Ra is just fine too, because once a Ra, always a Ra. We can't turn that off. It's, this, That's my true. vibration has zoomed a little more to the to the Za. Exactly, exactly. But I'm and still so Ra, and I love Ra. It begs me to begin. So. I know that there are many people that are joining us this evening that are meeting you for the first time. And that is why I wanted to share my personal story and thank you for letting me indulge that. And I, I really just have to ask the question. So were you always this way? I mean, were you born aware or was this a journey for you? I mean, I know the levels of, of upliftment and evolution since we've known each other. I'm talking the early years, you know, how did this path unveil itself for you? Very good question, and I have the perfect answer because I know it by heart. My heart. <laughs> <laughs> I was a child of the 60s, born 1950, but raised in the 60s. But I was a late bloomer to the hippie people, but I always liked the, the ideas. But I rebelled against what this society and establishment was feeding us. Mm. And so I was always on the outside. And, but I wasn't really an alternative uh, mystic or spiritual. I was just a person who was looking for some authenticity, some reality, some deeper anything. At that time, mainly it was fun. I was just happy having fun. Whatever was fun was good enough for me. But I found over the years that fun wasn't good enough, that fun could often get you in trouble. <laughs> and I didn't want to be in trouble. I wanted to have real fun, which was uh, I think Helen Keller says it best that people learn that life isn't about getting ahead and, and uh, attaining something and being successful. It's about dedicating your life to a worthwhile purpose or worthwhile mission of love, not, not some churchianity, false religion, uh, spiritual concentration camp, but a true spirituality. And so the older I got, I went from the more fun, hippie, uh, just let it all hang out type of uh, guy. And I decided that I prayed to the inner God within. I, I believed very much in Jesus, but not, not the churches, but I believed in J the figure of Jesus. And Jesus said, uh, okay, none can come to the father except through me. So I said, all right, Jesus, my dear Lord, savior and shower of the way, show me the way, show me what I must do. He said, all right, give up everything. I was a naturopathic doctor at that time, uh, working, helping a guru in his ashram. And I was tired of that too. I didn't want to be a part of the spiritual concentration camp. So I, I donated all my equipment to, to, the, to the yogi and the guru and his, and his medical doctors and gave them my equipment, taught them what I could about iridology, gave everything and went to the jungles of the Yucatan and the temples of Oaxaca and Chichen Itza. And there I had an experience at the temples where I met extraterrestrials in my third eye and my mind. And they said, you've come home. Your vision quest is no more. You are one with your inner soul. And I said, oh, what's that? They said, you are one with us, beloved. Didn't you know that you were an extraterrestrial? 
living on the earth plane and that you're here on a special mission. I said, oh no, I didn't know that. Tell me all about it. Now I gotta <laughs> ask, no, no wait, I gotta ask, I gotta ask. So <laughs> at, at that moment, were you freaked out or were you just like, okay, yeah, I get this. I mean, was it I just was a natural acceptance? I was likely freaked out. I was yeah. eating it all up, but I was okay. frightened too. I thought, I would I think, think you would have had to have been, yeah. Yeah. I thought, Kira, that they were about ready to take me off to the loony bin. I, I said, hear but that. But you know, it's okay because I, I can, being loony is fine. If, if it gives me joy and substance, and it's loony because everybody else would think it's loony tune. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I actually had read a little information from Brad Steiger about the star beings, about people being uh, star people, being star seated in the 72. And this experience was happening to me in 78. So it wasn't unheard of, but I wouldn't, I didn't dare dream or think that I was one of these. I later met Brad Steiger and he wrote several books about Moyer and I and called us star people. Later, we became elder ambassadors as we walked that path as it was revealed to me. But while I was in the jungles, I said, well, tell me more. And then I realized that the monkeys who were swinging in the trees were speaking English to me. I said, now this is it. This is really too much. How can I hear the monkeys talking English? Does anybody right, else? Wait, I have to ask, were there, psychedelics involved? were there psychedelics involved or was this just happening? Now, what would make you think such a thing as that? Just there ask. were some natural growing mushrooms in the right. area. There, that's fine. And they did help. They did help heighten my senses. But exactly. I don't need them now. And I can, but I, I still I'm have not, those. I'm not, I'm, I want to stay in context with the story because Za, I know that a lot of my <laughs> listeners are saying, "Okay, well, I want to have this experience," and you know, because everything you're sharing with me, this is courage. This is the man who was one way is now out in the jungles, and okay, now the monkeys are speaking English, and I'm understanding them, and <laughs> I'm being told I'm an alien. Let's face it, that's a, a courageous yeah, I needed more mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Bali. <laughs> I needed more mushrooms. <laughs> Told me down there, the native said, you got to have these mushrooms because they, they tell you the truth. It's like right. Don Juan says, you take the mescalito, which right. is the spirit, active spirit agent in peyote. But right. there they had psilocybin, which was an active agent in the mushroom. Right. And it's a, a rare kind of mushroom that only grows in the cow patties of certain kinds of cows. Correct. And so those Mayan cows were sacred. And so their dung produced very sacred mushrooms that would take you to only to certain places in the sky that allowed you to meet your star makers. Right. But if you weren't on a sacred path, you would eat the mushroom and get sick. Exactly. But for me, yep. No, that's important yeah, to know. Yeah. Those were the natives that told me, this is what you do here. Right. A mystic would come here and take these mushrooms. I said, oh, yeah? I said, how much? <laughs> they said, not much, just a few dollars. I said, okay. Yeah. I tried them, and they were wonderful. So I was meditating, eating them under a big tree of enlightenment, right in front of the pyramids. And people were behind me about 300 yards away, a tourist. And they said, look at that crazy guy over there under the tree meditating. Who does he think he is, Buddha? And I got up and turned around and said, you know, the thing is, is you're going to re receive the, con the, the, the damnation, the crucifixion from people, no matter where you go or what you do. So you need to really be who you are and do what you do and think not of them as long as you're not hurting them. Let them think what they want to think. So exactly. I went on and I went back deeper into meditation. And that's when the monkeys were sw swinging through the trees and they're howler monkeys. But right. instead of howling, I, I've been there. They're beautiful. Yeah. I know, you know, I know you've been there. Yeah. Many places you've been where they have them. And they and it, it wasn't as if they were speaking English. It was just I could understand their language right. in my mind, which was coming out to me as English. But they were still making the noise they make. But it made me realize that those monkeys were a lot more than just swinging animals. Exactly. They were sacred beings out there, like that bird behind you. They have a sacred soul and purpose and energy and love. And they were telling me something. And I asked them, what are you telling me? And they said, didn't you know you were here with us before? Mm -hmm. I said, with who? With our relatives. Oh, the monkeys. I said, okay, what did we do? Well, just like your star elders are telling you, you lived here with us and you came from the stars in the spaceship and you got out and you helped us. 
in the in the uh, monkeys, the Mayans, the people, and the space people lived together in a time of peace and plenty, like a Garden of Eden, way back before Atlantis even went under. Exactly. And so you're back now, Raja, Merk, Merkaba, you're right. on a mission on this planet to go back to your country. God forbid I had to go back to the lands of McDonald's and Exxon to try to pull the, the militaristic uh, capitalistic people out of their fear and hate and, and warlike machinery to teach them that there's more to life than all of that stuff, wearing suits and big buildings going up and down, that we need to be one with nature and we need to swim with the dolphin and swing in the trees like the monkey and, and, <laughs> and have fun and love one another and be real and that there's a whole lot more than what they're doing out there at the Exxons and the McDonald's and that we really are beings from other worlds, other dimensions. And we have a purpose down here on this beloved earth to make of it a true dwelling place of the gods and the goddesses. And those of us who are still the pioneers doing that, we are making that possible, but not when we have to punch a clock and fill out a form this way and that way and do this and that, only when we can live our true heart's desire. And by living that, by bringing the power forth from that true higher angelic spot, we can help the people, the sincere people who are still in that business world, who are seeking a way out, but have their whole lives invested in that. Some of them, like your dear friend, Jim Onek, who invented the healing laser, he's a scientist and a disciple of, of Tesla. He can, he can exist in both worlds. He can exist in the business world, the scientific world, so and I bring a healing in. device. So I'm going to jump in because you're right. Please. And, and it's an amazing thing. However, I want to, tonight's show is about when masters come together. And the first thing I want to share with you is something that I, I haven't shared with you today. And I think, I think all of you listening can agree that listening to the story of this extraordinary being in form, we all can say thank you for the journey that you have taken and that Moira has taken and is continuing to expand for us all. And the gift of that is that when we come together, oh, that's stunning. Is that Moira? Yeah. Oh my God. Yes, that's oh. Moira. And she has a message for us later too. I'm sure she that's does. Her, and I'm eager to receive it. It's gorgeous. Thank you. And so when you scrolled in now, and I love that you held up the heart just as I was going to share that. So when we scroll <laughs> in now, to all of the masters right now, and then we're going to go to our phone lines because we got a big phone bank here. I mean, we're never going to get to everybody, but we'll do our best. Um, but when you scroll to now, give me the one minute mastery experience that you've noticed over this extraordinary lifetime and form that has called you into the za that you are now. I, I'm answering from the voice of Moira. And, and that is when humanity is humble enough and loving enough to realize the true meaning of service to others before self. That when we can really think of others and help others and not think of ourselves. And that's beyond, it's beyond logic. It's beyond reasoning. It's of the heart. Because in truth, we are all one. And if we can't reach down to help up the other and, and love and think of others, then we're not, there's, there's no sense in being because we're not here to accomplish, we're here to love. And each of us will be called, each in our own way, in our own time, to prove ourselves so that we can go through the crucibles and walk the path that we, that we teach. They say, walk the walk walk the talk and so that's what i would say mm, i'm i'm just i'm speechless so i'm just breathing and thank you for that beautiful sharing i also it was a beautiful moment to see 
you and Moira as one energy. It was really quite beautiful. Thank you. I, I don't think I've experienced <laughs> that that way before. So that was really a gift. And I really appreciate that. You're Thank so you sweet. So oh, you honey, so sweet. Yeah. you make it so Beyond easy. Comprehension. <laughs> Oh, bless your heart, sweetheart. So, hey, speaking yeah, of sweet, sweet is that bird behind. That's why you oh, love that bird. Oh, my baby, behind. Shaylita, is who is, is still so here. Sweet. Yeah, very, very. So, speaking of sweet, we have to go to the call board. Um, we have all these beautiful people that want to speak with us this evening. And uh, I do see uh, quite a few here. I'm going to go first right here to Cleveland because I see Monica and hey Monica by special request you get to cut the line tonight hey sweetheart Ooh. oh my god I am almost bowing down on my knees before both Aww. of you beautiful masters and of course sending my love to Street and to say Lisa and our whole beloved health ascension community um, thank you for taking my call. I would like to say, Za, that I am a big fan of your radio show. You do such a great job, the singing and uh, the yeah. really special guests you have on and all your heart that you pour out into everything you do. Thank you for what you're doing for our planet and for the universe. And What radio uh, show is that, Lady Monica? <laughs> that is Conclaves with the Stars right here at Oneness Talk Radio.com. <laughs> oh, right? that and is a phenomenal right. show with a phenomenal <laughs> guest. <laughs> Go ahead, Lady Monica. Forgive me. Forgive Aww. me. Forgive me. Yes. Uh, Conclaves with the Stars uh, on Wednesdays uh -huh. at, uh, let's see, 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 o'clock Eastern. Do I have it right? <laughs> you do, sweetheart. And so, hey, Monica, how what can we do to serve you tonight, sweetheart? Well, I, you know, I love my mini soul readings from my whole family, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I've been uh, uh, dealing with this um, gum issue, <laughs> but I feel it's related to my heart. And could you please shed some light for me on it? Is it you? You said gum, right? Gum, you, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, I just I I wanted to make sure because the minute you said that, I got a sharp like um, pain, and and I and and what yeah. what I noticed was the irritation, and what what what, and and my heart is really heavy right now. There's like a um, like hard to breathe, and so sweetie, yeah. um, I uh, forgive me, but self-imposed anxiety is a way that we tell ourselves that we're not good enough. And so you are more than good enough. And when our gums are irritated, it's telling our teeth that we aren't able to digest our life. And so you know that none of that's true. You know that all of that is just part of the remembrance. And I love that you were supposed to be our first caller tonight because this <laughs> is what Shri and I are talking about this weekend is that the energy of this remembrance right now that is so strong, that is so powerful, which is why I wanted to gather masters together on the show tonight, which is why our beautiful Za is my co-host. Because right now that remembrance is like a pressure that is trying to self-impose a energy of hopelessness on those who are unable to claim their truth. And thereby it's self-imposed exile, it's self-imposed um, guilt, doubt, yeah. shame. Yeah, so babe, I, I, I really want you to hear this with all my heart and soul. Yeah, right, I'm feeling that too. Breathe again because I'm having a hard time speaking. And, and I'm feeling it's like two, it's right here. It's like, like two pillars, like, like two long sticks. And, it, and it's like, you can only, you can pull these out, but there's been a payoff for keeping them in. Ooh. Yeah. And it's time to recognize yeah. that the master within is really inviting you to relax and trust it and to let go of that which is an illusionary perception for that, which is the truth of your divine nature. So I want you to just breathe into that. And Zah, is there anything you'd like mm. to add, sweetheart? I can only say that Monica is a rare jewel in the firmament. That's She's true. a true, very high angelic soul 
a Serafina whose specialness will one day be known, but it doesn't matter to be known or not. She is just a very special being. And she she's going through, like you said, self-imposed anxieties, what have you. All humans must walk that. But behind all that is a very special person. I think yes. having having been born in Romania makes her a little different than the average person you meet out mm -hmm. there in the world. She, she has some special DNA and some special love in her heart, which makes her very, very treasured and loved by the great ones. And so whatever these things that she goes through, it seemingly is, is minuscule compared to who she is. And so I know one day she'll break out of that. And I see her as a cosmic daughter Oh, yeah. She's truly a, a daughter that any father would be proud to have because some some families they they really help their their mothers and fathers and they and they take good care of their children. Others don't, but this is a really good one. And her love for you, Kira, is just immeasurable. You and Sri both. She just loves the both of you so much. It's very rare to find a being that that has that kind of love in their heart. Well, let's all breathe into the truth of this blessing. And Monica, everything that Zah has just shared and the, then the courage and the tenacity for you to be here this evening, I would just like to say that all of this community right now is bowing before you and saying, thank you for holding open this doorway. Now love yourself so much that we can dance together more freely. And, and Angel, yeah. you know, so it is, right? And so it is. All Thank right. you both with all my heart. Thank you, Angel. We love you. Namaste, my angel. Namaste. Bye-bye. Well, Zah, my heart is just so full and, and we have such a full call board and uh, I'm going to go over to Thailand right now. So I'm going to open up the Ooh. line. Namaste. Oh, I know who that Thailand. is. You know who this is. Hey, Thailand. Yeah, Kenla. Hi, Namaste. sweetheart. Namaste. Wow. Hi, Angel. Today is a really special day for me. It's a Chalita day, if I may say so. Okay. I've been looking at my, <laughs> my soul chakra as I'm working with this amazing course. And for me, it's an eight. Protection and commitment, a spiritual warrior. For Sam, it's truth revealed. 27 years cancer free today is a nine. Woo! And 11 years today, Sam and I are together 11 years, and that's Reverend wow. Reunion. Oh. Uh, I am stepping the arena of the new octave of my mastery, and I would love a mini soul reading on that. Oh. It's just wow. Well, okay, before I go any further, I have to share while the two of you are here together on Soul Mirrors, be, be amazed because the two of you actually helped me co create today. Earlier today, you know, Zah, you and I were back and forth a lot on the email. And then Ken Lai, <laughs> you sent me your emails. I then lost almost two hours and my poor Bria, I send her an email that says, insolment arriving, can't stop flow, and then just disappeared. And the insolment that came through, I am still integrating. And I will send it to both of you to read the unedited what came through today, because I believe that and, and it was interesting because Shri also uh, texted me in the middle of it and it was like, whoa. So there was like this power grid around me allowing this to come through. And so I just wanted to acknowledge before your other mini soul reading, Kenla, that while you and my beloved Za are here together and my beloved Shri is sitting over there, today we all co-created something quite extraordinary. And... Um, and I know I'll be releasing it to the public. I, and then Zah, you wrote me and said you were talking to Melody. Well, you know, I was right. I I started this insolment on Melody's behalf because I'm on deadline for Sedona Journal, and and what came through <laughs> is so much more than I've ever done that I'm holding it a day because I don't even know if Melody's ready for it. I mean, it's been that kind of day, and this is kind of what I started the show with tonight is. Pay attention to what's been happening since this full moon opening. So Kenla, my angel, who I feel, oh my God, honey, I get to do this in person really soon. I'm very excited. <laughs> um, and to Sam, first of all, 
when you two, it's so funny, they're singing the Elton John song, Candles in the Wind. Um, they're saying that the <laughs> two are really these pillars of light that have come together. And it's funny, they're using all these metaphors of all these different worlds. They're saying like, you, you two have come together to pour, form a more perfect union. And then they're saying that the light between you is now rising to a level where Sam has arisen to be able to support that which is mutating inside of you. Very similar to how Sri had to transform himself to support what's mutating inside of me. All Everybody is moving through these moments they're saying that the steps have opened before you and they are crystalline indeed. And with each step you climb, the next rung will find a greater meaning. And they're saying it's time to just go whoo, and once again become the student. And, and it's like when I did that, I felt like, like um, how do I describe this? It's almost like I just pulled myself out of a cocoon. And it's like, it's like, going up to the next level and realizing that within the student is the teacher and that the master within is already guiding. And then to look around and notice all the ones that are there with you and to notice where that takes the evolution. And so I'm honored and beyond breathless to, to share this with you this evening. And my heart is receiving the blessing of your 27 cancer for years from what was an extraordinary journey. And Ken, I do wanna share that your book, I read every single page. Your book inspired me in ways you will never even maybe, and, and I, yet I know you do. And so I have read your story more than once because then I read it to Sri the second time I read your book. And um, it, it's, it's out of print guys, so I'm not gonna mention the name, but if you ever come to Tosa Blue Mountain, I have Ken's book out in our living room because everyone should read this book. And, and more importantly, Ken, your photography changes the world with every glimpse. And so thank you for being you. And, and Za, is there anything you would like to share, my love? Well, I, I was deeply impressed with Ken Law and his, his way of being and his, um, his heart he came to me because of you one time and he said do you have any idea why kira has brought us together with this lovely poem that she sent just to you and me about something about us and i said probably because we were meant to meet <laughs> but through through um having met him I'm in awe of his bravery to live his path and to be in the place that he's at there in Thailand and to lead all those journeys and take all those people around to all those pilgrimages that he takes them to and the sacred places that he goes and the master souls that he knows and the lifestyle he lives. He's, he's truly a very special being. And I look forward to, to knowing him more. Yes. And my love, thank you for the blessing of joining us tonight, because tonight is about when masters meet, miracles happen. And for our entire community, guys, every story we're sharing this evening is your story. It's our collective journey. We are masters joining together in this moment. And so, Ken Law, thank you and Sam for adding that to our conversation, honey. I love you. Namaste, beloved. I'll see you in a little over two weeks. Namaste, Baba. Namaste. We Namaste. love you, honey. Bye-bye, sweetheart. Namaste. Whew. Yeah, just, just extraordinary moments. And, you know, one of the things that's been um, moving through a lot of the tribe, a lot of the community over the past week that I've been noticing is a recognition that we are at this moment of remembrance, which is very much about how we remember ourselves and how we are applying that mastery through that, that kind of 19 year cycle return, the ability to be able to say, yes, this is a moment where we have all been called. And through that, there have also been quite a few that are, are really holding into the energy of, I'm afraid. And so I'm curious in your tribe, how, how is your tribe processing that right now? How, how are you guys moving through that and assisting others to stay in the recognition that when we can hold only seeing the highest of each other's expressions, then we, be, then we amplify. And that's how we can together amplify each other and, and then amplify another and another. So I'm just curious how that's processing in your world. 
Are you speaking to me, beloved? I am. Because <laughs> my tribe is your tribe. <laughs> this is true, but you have you you have a different circle of conversation at times than I do, and so that's why I'm I'm wanting to bring these com these circles together and find the way that we can be supporting each other. Um, I, I'm not sure. I at first I didn't think you were talking to me, so I didn't catch the entire uh gist of what you were saying so i have a proposal i i have a prepared poem that moira helped to inspire me to read that might and give that's an what you're supposed to, to do let's saying. hear it i was wondering if you wanted to repeat what you were saying or should i go to my 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 pablum i absolutely know that that is exactly what this moment is about and then after that we'll go so. back to the phone lines oh very good very all good. right I have a message when when I put this on. This was one of uh, wrote Rose Quartz pendant Beautiful. that Beautiful. I got from Moira. Beautiful. It needs to be polished. It hasn't been polished, but it's, it came from Mount Shasta. It's beautiful. And it's a beautiful silver, set in silver rose quartz heart that I gave her for one of her, one of her birthdays, and um, it was missing for quite some time sleeping in a box and it came out recently and it said i have something to share with kira in the group in the tribe so when you said tribe i thought the only thing i can think of if she's talking to me is this beautiful <laughs> so i have some notes here and it's going to take me a little bit so i'd ask everybody if they would like to take a few deep breaths perhaps close their eyes it's not absolutely necessary but just go deep within and take this on a certain level, because it's a message from beyond the beyond. It's a message from the Christus, from the Ascended Masters, from Master Hilarion, and from the Alden of the Rose, and from the Sisterhood of the Rose, and from Venus. Raise your eyes, mighty ones, to deep within your inner cosmic screen. And look at the symbols that are coming to you. Perhaps you're seeing a golden triangle etching itself upon the mist of your mind. There are voices speaking to you. And they are saying that by the mystic three, the sacred triangle, all is objectified. In this time that is ahead of you, three phases ever precede realization in the initiations the masters that you are love faith and awareness the last one is the open sesame to the visible actuality of thy within for positivity or negativity the law works it brings forth whatever is spawned by man only when the triangle burns in the fire of one's heart will lasting results manifest. Awareness comes first. Breathe now, beloveds. Breathe deeply and let these mysteries be experienced. For the voltage of all of the energy that we are sharing this evening, the heavy discipline is heavier than customary in these days ahead of you. As in the universities of today, more is demanded of the senior students, the elders, than the freshmen. So too of you masters, masters of light, all of you more mature than the average soul. Complete thy sacrifice of service upon the light. Know that the road you walk is often requesting sacrifice and meeting some situations that are not necessarily easy and yet look at the blessings that come and how many you are helping for the masters know what each student can stand in some life all must surrender on the altar of the rose the rose look masters here are more masters in your inner world now. Circle of gold is forming high upon your hearts and in your cosmic screen. We are lifting, lifting now, mighty alpha and omega of light. Stand direct in the circle. Be strong to thy path and know that there's 
nature green beneath your feet. You're blessed to be in that green nature for that is the healing energy, the cosmic garden, luminous with flowers and greenery. The earth of ours is merged with the circle of infinity. This is the poem of Venus, the poem of love, the fiat of creation. For all is divine, everything is divine. Only man has declared otherwise. Everything is good. Wine, woman, man, song, laughter, all are used in the circle of light. Here all earth is Christ. And here let all thy seeking be, else cause an effect of thy own choosing and bring a reckoning unpleasant to thy taste, yet unborn. War will cease when humanity lives from the circle out to life. Sex will come forth in its divinity when marriage take place on the altar of love. Love is the true power. Knowledge is power. Wisdom, love, both are knowing and living in the circle of the golden flame. When ripe with initiation, the inner centers open and the disciple is lifted into the goal of attainment. You ask, what is mastership? We now answer, see here, the masters say, for man stands in the golden spiral. And it's time that man learned that to remember mastership must walk with all people, be a friend to the commoner, to the lower people, to the original people. When such is obtained, the master will prove all in the valley, even though he or she claims the mountaintop. No master is until he or she lives the common life first. He must drink of the lesser before the divine elixir is given. It's all obeyed, obeyed, so dare, dare and do. And I apologize because this is just so beautiful. We are going to have to say good night. And so I oh. want you to please send this to me. Please send this to me. I it ends with all is reached the dew of the rose. And we oh, have made it's it. love. Beautiful. Thank you. Please thank send you. it to me. And thank, thank you for being on the show. Thank you to all of you. I love you. I will be back live in early January, but Shri and I will be on this show from Bhutan, December 5th. Please check out my beautiful Ra Osiris on his show, Conclaves with the Stars, at Oneness Talk Radio. Za, thank you for the blessing of this connection tonight. Look for an email from me. Oh, my goodness. So much more to share. We love you, honey. Thank you for this opportunity. Blessings. Thank you and blessings. And thank you, my community. Mm -hmm. I love you. Tune in next week when Just Juntanen carries on live with her special guest and co-host, Christine Jobe. I love you. Take care, my angels. We are all soul mirrors, and you amaze me. Namaste. Many blessings. Love, 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 love.